Good afternoon, everyone. As you can see up there, I've been studying, I have studied both in chemistry and in biochemistry, and I'm currently a professor in both departments, and my research really is at the interface of both. So I'll first talk to you about antibiotics and resistance. As you may know, bacteria can be very beneficial to us. They can also make us very sick, sometimes even kill us. When that happens, you take an antibiotic, as you may know. For example, an aminoglycoside as shown here. Unfortunately, bacteria have evolved to become resistant to antibiotics. One way that they do that is, for example, they will express an enzyme that will modify the antibiotic to make it inactive. And therefore, it doesn't work, and therefore, you remain sick. For example, with the aminoglycoside, one of the mechanisms is acetylation of the aminoglycoside. And what my group aims to do is to try to develop inhibitors of these enzymes. We came up with a first generation of inhibitors for these enzymes. They were what we call bisubstrates. They were very, very potent. They were very useful also to get crystal structures of enzymes from different bacteria. They were useful in mechanistic studies. They showed us that some of these enzymes can be very complex using different folds, uh, behaving differently with different substrates and so on. So that was very interesting. However, these bisubstrates did not penetrate cells. So they were not useful to treat the uh, resistance. <coughs> So we, came, we did some medicinal chemistry and we came up with some molecules that worked in cells. As you can see on the y-axis is bacterial growth as a, as a function of antibiotic concentration. With the antibiotic alone, you can see that you can kill the bacteria, but if you add our inhibitor, you can kill the bacteria even faster. But the effect was very small, so we wanted something better, and we wanted to take advantage of our best inhibitor, the bisubstrate, shown at the lower right. So this is the first generation. So we envisaged that we could feed a molecule to the bacteria, and the bacteria would turn it to the inhibitor itself, and it would go ahead and block the resistance. So we tested the hypothesis, and we're happy to find that it works. As you can see on this plot, we're killing the bacteria faster and faster as we increase the concentration of inhibitor. So we're pleased with that. Now I'm going to switch gear completely and talk to you about green chemistry. We're trying to use P450s as biocatalysts. But why do we want to use these enzymes? That's because these enzymes do a chemical reactions that as chemists we have a very hard time to do. They hydroxylate at inactivated CH bonds. So there's no chemical reagents to do this selectively, regional selectively, and so on. But these enzymes do so, except they do so on the substrate that they want. And they hydroxylate where they want. But we want to tame them to get them to hydroxylate our substrates and hydroxylate them where we want them to hydroxylate them. So we envisage to use what we call chemical auxiliary, which is a, a molecule that you tag onto your substrate, and this molecule um, controls the binding to the enzyme and therefore points your substrate in a way that it forces the enzyme to do it, to do what we want, hydroxylate at a specific position. So we're very pleased to say that we've been able to tame some of the P450 enzymes, and this concludes my three minutes. Thank you.